am at the end of my senior year and I feel like I need to rewind a little bit. There's a little bit that I feel like I left out and I just want to put this in really quick. Um, my senior year, you know, Mountain Valley is a very, very small school. I think that I graduated with like 26, 36 people. Maybe it was 56, but no more than that. It was a very small school and whenever I was going to school, you had to have four years of English and that was what would keep kids there. And um, a lot of kids did half days their senior year like I did because I had all the credits that they needed. They just needed that English credit. And in Mountain Valley, every single senior was in senior English for first period. Everybody had senior English first period, and so that meant that all the seniors was in the same class with me, and that meant that Zach was in my class and other seniors. But all throughout my school career, I always, I was very smart and very quick, but I was small. I'm, I'm smaller than everyone, and I always felt that I was socially behind. Like I said, I always pictured myself in a tunnel. Everybody else is ahead of me, and I'm running, trying to catch up, but I can't. But at the same time, I was very, very, very smart, school smart, very, very school smart. I would um, get my work done really quickly, and I would usually do my neighbor's work too, or my friend's work, and then we could play. I wanted to get to the play. I would work hard and get to the play, work hard enough for me and my neighbor, and then we could get to the play. And so that's how it was for me all throughout my school career. And so having my first period senior English with Zach, I was just like, of course, I'm going to do all of your assignments. And he was just like, yeah, of course. What I didn't know is all throughout Zach's school career, it was the opposite. He always found someone to do his work. So he was looking around the first day for someone to do his work, whereas I was looking around the first day for someone to do their work. Someone that didn't want to do their work, and I knew that if I did them, I could get brownie points with them or something, you know? Whatever. I usually did my friend's work because I wanted to get to the play. But yeah, and so this time, you know, Zach is my boyfriend, and so, and he's looking around, and of course it's going to be me, and of course I'm going to do it. And it's so weird how he assumed that I would do yeah, it. Yeah, it's so crazy to me how he assumed that I would do it. Like, that's the natural role of the girlfriend. I didn't think that it was. I thought that I was being nice and kind to do that for him. And, you know, I was hoping to help him graduate with better grades because I expected, because I promised God that I would marry this guy. So I expected, you know, him to be able to have a good career to help take care of us. And so I thought that school was a part of that. It's really not, but I thought that it was back then. And so, yeah. Un <laughs> so during my senior year, my teacher, our English teacher, kind of caught on, but never really said anything, never really got us in trouble, would hint at us that she knew what we were doing, you know? And I would, like, always find ways to give him the answers to the test or whatever, you know? And then we had the big, big research paper. And I guess she wasn't expecting me to do it, but I did. I did his and I did mine. And I feel like the big jab that the teacher did to me, <laughs> which I feel like is very, it's very petty. I, I feel like it would have been better for me to get in trouble for cheating, for helping him cheat, because, you know, I was a cheater too, you know, both sides of the cheating is cheating, you know, if you have a person to copy off of that's willing to help you, you know, there's also the cheating where, you know, I don't want you to cheat off me, I don't want to get in trouble, but there is two sides to the cheating, okay, as far as schoolwork cheating goes, but anyway, so yeah, I did both of these big end of the school year papers. I wrote both of the papers and his paper I wrote really bad because I knew that he didn't write like me and I tried to make it look different. You know, I, I tried my best to do my best. <laughs> my best plagiarism that I could do. <laughs> okay, and it really frustrated me because my teacher gave him an A, like a 99A and gave me a B. And she was just like, 
That's what you get for doing his paper. If you would have done your own, you probably would have got an A. And I just found that really strange. Like, that's the way that you're going to punish me. Oh, well, I'm so happy that my man gets an A. You know, that's my thought period back then. But, yeah, so I was... Yeah. <laughs> so I just wanted to put that in there. I wanted that because I remember that. And I don't know. It's like, it's a part of my story. So, yeah, I just wanted to add that in there, too. And then, so, so after my senior year and after Zach had broken up with me and, you know, pretty much broken my heart and he was moving on, so I felt like I needed to move on. And I was now working at the steakhouse and I was loving my job at the steakhouse and these two brothers were flirting with me often. And we started hanging out a lot after work because they would close down and I would close down. And then, you know, we would go hang out after work for a while. And um, these boys, they came to my work one time and they're brothers and they were just like, we want to know which one of you, which one of us do you like best? Which one of us do you want to date? Because the one that you choose is going to take you on a date Friday night. <laughs> And I, I was just like, oh my gosh, I was flattered, honestly. And, you know, I chose the shy one because I liked him. And we started going on dates and we had gone on two or three dates and it was really sweet. And he was a really good guy. And I, you know, I was telling my girlfriends about it. I was hanging out with my girlfriends more again. It's really good. And I started telling them about these guys and they were like, cool, let's go meet them. And so... I told the guys about my girlfriends, and they were like, cool, let's, you know, bring them to our house, and we'll have a barbecue. Well, these guys, they had a really good, loving family, and they lived right across the street from their parents, and I thought that was really cool, and because 9-11 happened, and they were seniors, they were going into the military. This was their last summer before going into the military with 9-11 happening, and, um, going into the war <laughs> that was beginning and so they had given they had this house right across the street and and um it was really nice and these guys they they cooked dinner for us girls and it was really nice and we had some beers and we were sitting around the table and his brother let's see okay let's see I'll give them names okay James and Joe James is the one that I chose, and then there's Joe, okay? And James is the shy one, and Joe's the outgoing, fun-loving one. But I really like James, and he's very, he's very calm and cool and collected, and I like that. But anyway, so at this dinner, Joe was flirting with me hardcore. Like, I expected him to be flirting with my girlfriends, and one of my girlfriends kind of wanted to try to hook up with him, and he, he was just, like, not even interested in them, like, flirting with me hardcore, and I, like, was confused. It, it confused me. It put me in a state of confusion, and, and then after the dinner, you know, my girlfriends, they were gonna leave and go on, go somewhere else, and I wanted to stay. I really wanted to stay and hang out with James more, and, really get closer to so him. they were and like okay bye and it was no big deal they were like okay bye see you tomorrow and you know they were like we can take her we can take her to work or whatever i don't know but anyway so i end up staying and we end up watching this movie and joe's just flirting with me hardcore all night long and it's not that i'm telling him to stop this is before i realized and i teach my girls this you have to tell boys to stop. You have to. Don't just let them be and be confused. Tell them to stop. And if they don't, get, leave. You have to leave. You have to physically leave and get away from boys because they won't stop. They, they, they won't sometimes. And I'm not saying this is like rape or sexual assault or anything like that. He was just flirting with me and it was making me very confused like, in the movie, I'm, like, trying to snuggle up with James, and then Joe comes and puts his arm around me, and I'm just like, what is going on here? And then 
the end of the night comes and I'm just going to sleep on the couch and Joe or James just goes to his room and kind of like a uh, pouty puppy dog <laughs> goes to his room and I'm just sleeping on the couch and James, James and Joe both go to the room and I'm on the couch and then Joe comes out and he's just like all up on me flirting with me and I don't know it's not that I I let him have sex with me. I did. He it wasn't necessarily rape or anything like that because I did consent and you know I was like okay and we did it and it was just really stupid and really dumb and not a lot of fun at all. And then the next morning we get up and we go over to their mom's house and we are um, eating breakfast at their mom's house and they're all like, oh, it's such a sweet girl. I'm meeting their family, their sister and stuff like that. And then, you know, they take me home. And it was just really weird. It was a really weird experience. And I really felt bad. I felt guilty. I felt I felt horrible, and they didn't want nothing to do with me after that, you know, because it was a test. They were testing me that night. I know that's what they were doing. They were testing me to see if I would be faithful to James, and I was not. I failed the test. They, I felt like they drowned me in hormones. I was drinking that night, but I was not that drunk. You know, I've been drunker, and I can say no whenever I'm drunk. I did not say no. Um... It was like they drowned me in hormones, confusion, and just a little bit of booze mixed in. I don't know. It was confusing, and I really hate that I failed that test. But honestly, it is what it is, and it wasn't meant to be. And so I'm happy for that. I'm happy how my life actually turned out. But at the same time, it was really strange. And it wasn't too long after that happened that I went to a party, and... Joe was at this party, and he ended up hooking up with one of my girlfriends. They ended up having sex, and she's like, I'm so sorry. I'm like, I don't care, girl. Do your thing. Whatever. And I guess James got himself a new girlfriend, and I hope that it worked out for him. I hope that he has a wonderful life. I really never did get in touch with these boys ever again. But, yeah. So, that's how it is. And... Oh, all throughout the summer, you know, there were girls that would tell me that they were sleeping with Zach. I had girlfriends that came to me crying. They apologized for sleeping with Zach. I'm like, I don't care, girl, you know. That's, it's his life now. And I did end up hooking up with Zach a little bit towards the end of the summer. And then he just, like, broke up with me again, big time. Like, slammed me into the ground, you know. Like, the thing is... My senior year, when Zach would start telling me that I'm no good, I'm good for nothing, I'm low down, I'm this, I'm that, I'm like scum, I would believe it. I really did believe it. And it's almost like I wanted him to tell me these things, you know? But yeah, the summer ended and right as I was moving, I was going to move in with my dad who lived right close to the college that I was about to attend. So I, I needed to quit my job. And to move in next to my dad until my dorm room opened up. And so I was staying with my dad and he was with my stepmom. And right before I moved in with him and right before I quit my job, and it was, it was really sweet because the steakhouse people threw me a going away party and they were like, are you sure you want to go to college? Because you could be looking at a manager position here. And I was like, yeah, I think I want to go to college. And they were like, I understand. <laughs> But yeah, I was, it was really sweet leaving the steakhouse. Then with Zach, you know, he, he told, he told me all the things that my insecurities wanted to hear. All the things that my sad victim mentality needed to hear to be able to hold on to my sad victim mentality oh, self. Yeah. <laughs> so that's all that I got for you guys today. Thank you so much for listening. And as always, be blessed. That's all she got.